What does nutrition, glucose and hydration have to do with improved healing outcomes? I speak with Tom Wainwright and Tom has been working with the Enhanced Recovery After Surgery program for many years. Join Tom and I as we talk about ERAS protocols and how these protocols can impact outcomes. Take a look on the cut. Tom, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. What's really important for the patients is not only that surgical component of their journey, but it's all about that post-operative recovery. Can you tell me why everybody should know about ERAS or enhanced recovery after surgery? Absolutely, and I can tell you in one minute or a hundred minutes. Um, I think if you think about what care your mother or father would want, it's definitely an enhanced recovery pathway. Enhanced recovery is about minimising the surgical stress response. It's about a multimodal approach where every little bit of the patient pathway is looked at and optimised so that when you add up the benefits of all those little bits, you get a big benefit for the patient concerned. And primarily to date, that's been about accelerating um, the time it takes for them to be ready to go home from hospital. Um, we, you know, hospitals are great places, but you want to be home as soon as you can. You do. So enhanced recovery to, to date has been about reducing the length of hospital stay and reducing the complications in that early post-operative period. I think it's interesting with ERAS is that it really does look, it is a multimodal protocol <clears throat> and it looks at specific components mm -hmm. of the physiological response to surgery. Mm -hmm. So you're optimising the patient outcome. Mm -hmm. What is really interesting is the use of ERAS centres. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about how many ERAS centres there are around the world. And in particular, what are some of the barriers that clinicians face when they're trying to establish ERAS centres? That's a good question. Um, I think the, the first thing to say is that um, uh, ERAS is is one term, but enhanced recovery or fast track or, or rapid recovery are other terms that are used. And those terms are used in lots of hospitals um, around the world. There are some that are part of specific research groups or initiatives such as the ERAS Society or other national societies or, or groups. For, for me, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. What matters is that they're providing evidence-based care um, to, to their um, patients. What difficulty that provides is that a lot of people say they're doing enhanced recovery, <laughs> but maybe they're not necessarily necessarily are. And that's important because enhanced recovery has specific components. There are generic components that you could probably say go across the surgical specialties. And then there are procedure specific elements that will be relevant for hip or knee replacement as opposed to colorectal surgery. And you get the results from enhanced recovery when you do every step of the pathway. Mm. And that's where implementation, as you rightfully ask, gets hard because um, we don't work in factories. Um, we work with people in dynamic, complex, moving um, systems. And enhanced recovery is all about the patient pathway. Mm. And hospitals tend to be in silos of pre-assessment or anaesthetics and surgery directorates. And what we need is we need to blur those departments and silos with enhanced recovery. And the most successful um, hospitals do that. They put the patient first and they collaboratively agree on their pathway. And then they standardize the processes needed within the hospital to, to deliver that pathway so that every patient gets it every time. And the world leading centres have gone through that process now of standardisation and now they're looking to tweak it and personalise care for at-risk group or high-risk groups. Mm -hmm. And that's going on on one end, but then we've still got the other end where centres are struggling to implement it in the first, first instance. And I think that's because what people, I don't think, realise that enhanced recovery is a quality improvement initiative. Mm -hmm. Implementing ERAS is not the goal. Improving patient care is the goal, and ERAS is a vehicle with which to do that. And we know from the quality improvement literature that you've got to have leadership, you know, at every level, the top, the middle and on the ground. Um, you've got to have an organisational culture and an environment that supports change. Change can be difficult, especially when it involves lots of people. Um, 
You also need a good data infrastructure. You need to know that what you're doing is actually improving things. Mm -hmm. You may need to collect some data beforehand to know what you should change, because you may not know what's happening in your own system. And lastly, you probably need to use a quality improvement approach. Yeah. So a systematic way of understanding your baseline, changing some components, reevaluating it. And it's that continuous cycle yeah. um, of quality improvement which the best centres use. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. And Thanks I'm for sure inviting viewers me. viewers will really take a lot away from what you've talked about today. Thanks so much, Tom. No worries. Thank you.